We're here with Phil Schreier, the senior curator at the National Firearms Museum for another edition of the Curator's Corner. Phil, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Cam. It's a pleasure to be here as always. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you and hear a, a great story about one of the many firearms in the National Firearms Museum. And, and tell us a little bit about this rifle. Uh, Cam, this is a, a rather ornate, it's not a run-of-the-mill, uh, Remington rolling block uh, rifle. And what we mean by Remington rolling block is there is a, uh, a little breech mechanism right here that falls back and you put in a self-contained metallic cartridge like a 4570, close this gate and then pull the hammer and, the, uh, and it, that fires the firing pins in that breech block right there and it's locked into place. So the recoil, that's not going to pop that cartridge out. Then when you're ready to extract it, you just push that back, that little foot kicks out the, the shell and you're ready to load again. It was uh, in competition with what we call the Trapdoor Springfield for military contracts. And in 1871, uh, a couple times the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy actually bought small numbers of these. Uh, but its biggest sales were to, to the militaries overseas. Uh, Egypt, Mexico, a number of South American countries uh, bought a lot of these Remington rolling blocks uh, for their military use. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, I mean, in, in the early 1870s, I, I'm guessing our U.S. Army and Navy uh, weren't actually uh, buying a whole lot of firearms. They still had a lot of surplus left over from the uh, the Civil War that eventually got sent overseas as well in many cases, right? Right. Uh, big deal was with the Civil War surplus, and the reason why those guns went so cheap, literally a quarter, 50 cents, was because they were still percussion. Uh, you know, they call cap and ball. They were still muzzle loaders. Uh, during the Civil War, well, right before the Civil War, self-contained metallic cartridges started to appear on the market. By the end of the Civil War, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that trying to uh, go through the 11 separate steps of loading and firing gun with uh, raw powder and ball was going to be replaced by being able to just shove a self-contained cartridge into the breech. Uh, so advancements were made on converting existing Springfields, the Allen conversions, things of that nature would eventually evolve into the trapdoor Springfield of 1873. Uh, but the Remington uh, rolling block was their, uh, their effort in that area. And uh, this is one of the, uh, the more popular styles. This is what Theodore Roosevelt's Rough Riders encountered when they went up San Juan Hill, where the Spanish armed with uh, seven millimeter versions of this Remington rolling block. Uh, this particular piece though, Cam, has a great story behind it. And I know you knew I just didn't bring you a standard rolling block to look at tonight. Uh, this is beautifully engraved. It's a silver plated, uh, not chrome but, or nickel, but silver plated. And it's engraved by L.D. Nimsky, who is one of the, uh, one of the premier firearms engravers of the, uh, of the 19th century. When you say a Colt is Nimsky engraved, you've just added $20,000 onto the value of the gun without even considering what it is or its condition. Uh, and, but that's not all that makes this gun special. If you look at the, uh, the butt of the gun here, you'll see a little inscription uh, that reads, presented to D. Barclay for winning three matches, the NRA 1876. This is a trophy gun won by D. Barclay uh, during the international matches in 1876, and it is the first gun in the NRA's collection. This is the gun number one of the National Firearms Museum. It is the foundation from which the collection began to develop, and today is now some 5,000 firearms, 2,500 of them which are on display every day here. Wow. That's the gun that started it all. This is it. You know, th this seems like a good opportunity, Phil, to ask if, if people want to add to the museum's collection, to know that, that, the, that the guns that, that they treasure uh, can be treasured for generations to come, they can donate firearms to the museum, right? Encourage it daily. <laughs> I mean, what's the best way to, to go about doing that? Well, uh, there are a number of ways you can contact us on the, on the web nationalfirearmsmuseum.org. 
Uh, you can call the museum at 703-267-1602 uh, if you're interested in making a, a donation. Uh, they are tax deductible when they're made to the NRA's, uh, the NRA Foundation's National Firearms Museum Endowment. Uh, we, uh, we also accept uh, donations that we can convert into cash to buy something that we, we desire. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, we look for you know, all kinds of venues to be able to uh, facilitate the programs of the museum. But a donation of, uh, of a fine firearm, something that we want to keep and hold on to, put on public display, is uh, something we're looking for on a daily basis. And out of the 5,000 guns that are in the museum currently, there are only about a dozen that we've actually purchased. All the others have been through donations. That's fantastic. Yes, it is. All right. And, wonderful and, testament to our, our members and friends. And gun number one is on display, right? It, well, uh, gun number one is normally on display in our orientation gallery. But we're beginning to uh, redesign and revamp that entire area. Uh, gun number one will definitely make a reappearance soon. Uh, but for right now, we're, we're trying to find a new home for it within the galleries. But uh, look for it at the start of the summer. She'll be back on exhibit. Well, I'm glad that uh, folks could take a look at it uh, online here in the Curator's Corner. And Phil, thank you so much, sir. Uh, now, for, for folks who want to come out and see one of the other 5,000 firearms, or all of the other uh, 5,000 firearms, or at least the 2,500 that are on display at any given time, uh, what are the hours for the National Firearms Museum? Okay, we're open uh, Saturday, or Sunday through Friday uh, from uh, 9.30 until uh, 5 p.m. and on Saturdays uh, from 9.30 until 7.30 p.m. And uh, that's seven days a week, all year round. There are a few holidays in there, we'll shut the door, so give us a call before you come out, but that's when you'll find us. Phil Schreier, Senior Curator at the National Firearms Museum, thank you so much for another look at another fantastic gun. Thank you, Cam.